Are there people in positions like in the show Flack or Billions? The positions where they manipulate the world around them to get exactly what they want and supposedly make millions doing it. Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. We teach how to shape the inner environment around you to be more favorable to the outcomes you desire. Many construe the lessons we teach as manipulation. In fact, the word manipulation is the easiest word. You manipulate yourself to get one leg inside of your pants before the other. You manipulate uh, uh, the environment so a child has two choices between cleaning their room or going to bed early. You know, the, the favorable outcomes come through how you interact with the world. Now, in the show Flack, it's about a public relations department that fixes really bad problems for clients. They lie, they cheat, they, they steal time from individuals by setting up the most favorable conditions for their client to successfully navigate. Now, I don't even know if it's success because there's a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of challenges. The show Billions is about a billionaire and the uh, state's attorney – and they constantly are manipulating the environment to have this battle against each other. In both shows, the core actors are miserable in real life. Yes, they've got lots of income. They've got the means. They can hurt somebody. They can choose not to hurt somebody. They can do someone a favor. They can owe favors. But in real life, while these types of people do exist, think about the level of energy and effort that goes into keeping things organized. And in fact, in the world, in the real world, not the movie show world, in fact, uh, having a wealthy individual that manipulates people is actually a good storyline because you were going to ask, well, how do they hire this private, uh, you know, uh, these private people to tap phone lines or to monitor people? How do they get these insider tips? It, that's a lot of resources. So, of course, the character with a lot of resources is easier to spin than a pop, like a mobster movie where you're going to get this information by beating the hell out of somebody. My, my larger point being is that that manipulation can start out small and start to become an overwhelming part of keeping a story straight. It's like a kid telling a lie. They go from, no, I didn't eat the cookies, and mama's saying, look, I looked in the jar and there's no cookies – and then the kid says, well, it was the cookie monster. And the mom's like, well, are you sure you're not the cookie monster? No, no, no. I saw the cookie monster in the house eat the cookies. See, every lie requires two, three, four, even five more lies to cover it. So when you're using strategic relationship strategies, when you're aligning yourself with the best interests of your clients, the best interests of your vendors, and putting yourself in that middle position to to gain sometimes monetarily, sometimes power or influence. You have to be sure to keep everything above the level. That means there shouldn't be something in your background that if you get caught for doing it, is going to send you to jail, is going to have bad and negative press because we're a preventative approach, not a screw it all, do whatever the hell we want, and then we'll fix it later. Because with today's technology, there's security cameras, there's uh, what you say online stays around forever, there's research that's so easy in either human intel research or uh, open source resource research that can out everything about you. Uh, and, and really, we're, it's not about oversharing like a lot of people do on social media. This is about maintaining a demeanor and an environment that is case-proof. So if you end up dealing with bad people, air gap. So I've been in situations where I'm working on a project and the person I need a favor from, they, they owe me a favor, but they've done some bad deeds. I know about them. I air gap them. I don't ask them for the favor. I let them owe me. I just leave it alone. I've been in situations where clients are getting sued. And they're getting sued by some weird, un, unusual thing. We do a little research. We find out that it's actually... Uh, they're getting sued by a holding company. Is also suing other people. Uh, we we look at the plan to what do we do just to settle. Now, of course, I, I do a lot of the research. Their lawyer has the final decision with them. Uh, but you have to consider the bigger picture, and you're not folding over. It's about 
uh, winning the war, not just this battle, not just the next battle, but winning the entire war by strategically positioning yourself. So in this show, Flack, they're constantly saving people from their own bad behaviors. If we do a root cause analysis, you might have in the back of your head that if you avoid the bad behaviors or you avoid being around people with bad behaviors, you're less likely to get drawn into this kind of problem in the first place. And so it's the preventative measure that you implement along with the relationship strategies, along with the dossiers and the, and the research that we do on individuals, and you keep all of that in a sales environment. And in your personal life, you just be a straight shooter with people. You be honest with people. You don't get people into deals that are bad for them. You sincerely look out for the interests of your customers, your business partners, and those that are in your inner circle. You're not building an inner circle in order to exclude others. You're collecting. Think of it as a, as a curation. You're curating a list of individuals who have resources that you will need in the future and that potentially you have resources they need in the present. So, for example, if you're a services provider, who can buy your products and services? What are their interests? You don't magically become interested in their interests, but you can acknowledge their interests. I don't particularly play golf, but a lot of the people I work with love golf. So I'll keep my eyes out for opportunities for them to play golf, but I'm not going to push or pretend that I love golf. I'm honest. Hey, I go to the driving range from time to time, but I haven't been out on the golf course. I don't think I'm ever going to be out on the golf course. In fact, I got a really frustrated in the golf lessons that I was taking. And so I've taken golf lessons two or three times, actual with, with a golf pro, and I get out there and I'm like, damn, this is too much concentration. And so I'm honest about my position in relationship to their thing where I see other people say, oh, yeah, we play golf all the time. And the client's like, well, why don't we go play golf? Because the client wants you to pay for their golf so they can do what they want to do and they get to know you better. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm busy this weekend. And they have to, they have to create these blow-offs when they could have just said up front, uh, golf's interesting, haven't tried it, not that interested. You know, or their golf game sucks so bad that they they just don't want to embarrass themselves and they're like 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 this guy says well what's your what's your golf handicap i said well i i can i can barely play I go, well what is your handicap i said yes and we made it funny we 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 moved on because golf isn't going to be the only interest of the other person but if you feign and pretend that that's your interest and then you go out and study and you you get practice and you then you go out there so you don't look like an idiot um because you put all this extra effort into it that makes a great show Okay, that's what you see on television. Somebody promises more than they can deliver and then they work around the clock to deliver it and everybody's happy. That is the conflict and the controversy and the challenge that makes for good entertainment. But it's not a good idea in the real life because it burns up a lot of resources. It's better to accumulate skills over a long period of time, invest your strengths in the areas where you're going to have successes, uh, challenge stuff on your own time. You know, don't go, don't go play with the customer's money to try something new. You give the customer what's proven and then with your profits, you try something new and then you bring it back to the customers after it's proven. So again, in the show Billions, he's a hedge fund and he's setting up opportunities and he maintains arm's length. So uh, folks in his shop, they're, they're an investment company, folks in his shop will go out and do dirty deeds and he'll... Get that, sure, I'm really confident it's going to win, and he'll invest, and he'll make money. But to have this, the power of the U.S. government looking at your every move because you made a few shady deals just makes your life difficult. And so what I'm, what I'm saying here is while it's great entertainment to have these, uh, these very direct and arrogant individuals who, who push the limits and then seem to succeed with wealth and power – it doesn't always work in real life that way. And while there are PR agencies that will save your ass, there are fixers who will make who will arrange stuff for you, and there are hedge fund folks that I'm pretty sure are doing whatever the hell they want. Over time, it doesn't sustain. Uh, they spend millions of dollars on legal fees, and of course the legal firms and the PR firms and the fixers are enablers. They're enabling you to do this because in their position – they're insulated. 
you know, one of these wealthy clients call up the guy, the, the lady in Flack and, and say, hey, look, I'm having this problem. Come bail me out of jail. That person in Flack, uh, they got another job. You know, they got more than one client. See, you only got one life. These people who can promise to save you, who can figure it out for you and get you out of trouble, it can be addictive. It can be dangerous. And so you'll go between a, a euphoric power and a, and a depression of things are going great. Everything's working out. You see how I made him bend to my will? And then next thing you know, you got the uh, IRS special agents knocking down your door and you're losing everything because somebody in an office somewhere had a point to prove. There are people today making thirty and $40,000 a year, making average incomes, that when you come across their radar – as a top performer, a top earner, as somebody who's building up a net worth, who somebody has a perceived power over their life, that looks like they got it all together, they start mirroring you with what they see in entertainment, and then they got a chance because you've been late on your property taxes. And because you're late on your property taxes, they're going to come in and they're going to imminent domain your property. And they're going to come in and, and start looking at inspections. And they're going to come in and say, oh, you just add, you added an addition to your house last year and didn't get a building permit. And then they're going to go contact the IRS and say, hey, look, this person, we got some questions about this person. Can, can we see their tax returns? And then they're going to drill down and drill down. And then you get the case where I've had before, and it's the reason all my phone calls are recorded, is I've had people call me up and say, hey, look. I think you owe us $1,000. And I'll say, well, my CPA says I owe you $20. And they'll say, no, with all that money you're earning, you owe us 1000 And I'll say, are you sure I owe you 1000 and not the $20 that my CPA uh, laid out? Can you send me in writing the details of why I owe you 1000 and, and why you're expecting me to cut you a check for $1,000 right now? And they said, no, no, you, I'm calling you. I'm telling you right now, this is your notice. You have, you have this many days to pay. I said, by the way, you're on a recorded line. In Virginia is a one-party consent state. They hang up the phone. See, I've been in this business long enough to know how manipulation works, how, can, how to blackmail somebody, how to launder money, how to set up situations. But I know enough that, the, that it only works in the movies. And in real life, if you know that you s- cheated on something and you haven't diluted yourself and you just know that that little problem sitting out there, you're going to be in the middle of a due diligence on a big deal that's going to change your life and that little tiny thing's going to show up. It's like the marketers that lie about bankruptcy. There's a lot of success, success people out there that lie about how successful they are. And they've had bankruptcies in the past and they've never really owned real estate or something like that. And then the media finds out and it crushes them. How much better off would they have been if they just were up front and said, look, uh, I've done research. They take a different position rather than being the primary saying that they've done it and it works. They say, look, I've done research. I met the people. Here's this person who did this and it works. Here's this person who does that and it works. And I know that if you do it as well, it'll work for you. And then they earnestly also try it in their own lives. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So I want to leave you with this. While you see shows like Billions, you see shows like Flack, and it looks like an incredible and exciting life, and you're watching it, and it's entertaining. You want to see what's next. Now, there are cases I'm watching these shows, and I'm thinking these people are train wrecks. And they could have resolved the issue if they just did this and this. Now, remember, it's entertainment. If they would have just done the two things that I thought they should have done, then the show would have been over. It wouldn't be a... 12 week series, it would be like two shows and it's done. My point being, though, is in real life, it doesn't work that way. And when people ask me to fix stuff, it would have been better if we just didn't have the problem in the first place. And so while we can, in a public relations environment, solve for things, uh, while we can in other areas, I tend to drive clients towards what's called risk management. And so we're developing possible scenarios up front. And addressing those scenarios before we have like a pressing knife in the gut problem. Now still, you can use these strategies to solve the pressing knife in the gut problems. God forbid you ever run into something like that. But don't have behaviors that create the potential or the high probability for a major failure. Again, the major failures are great in TV. 
you know, the, 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 the hero is beaten down and the hero overcomes and now the hero is successful. Yeah, maybe that can happen in real life. But in real life, it might be better to have incremental improvements, to build a network around you that has resources that you need before you need the resources. So that's my point. I hope you take that away. I'm Justin Hit with Inside Strategic Relations, where we help you transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. And this is about having some introspection about how you use these strategies, not to manipulate people, but to set up favorable environments for all involved, and especially those in your inner circle, and then to drive the outcomes that you're looking for without having uh, little debts that are going to be owed out and little things that might pop up in the future and be a major problem. Because most of these things don't pop up when you're poor. They pop up when you finally made it. You'll show up in a newspaper somewhere being celebrated. You'll feel great about it. And somebody's going to come out of the woodwork and accuse you of something that, you know, behaviorally you could have avoided or behaviorally you could have set up in advance. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. Ask your questions at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, but it'd be best if you join my newsletter. If you join my newsletter, you're guaranteed to get notices of new content and uh, have a better conduit to ask questions and get them answered. Thanks for listening.